Hello, welcome to another edition of Witty Where You Are. I'm Casey, the Texas History Education Manager, and I'm going to be making a historic version of chili today. As we said in a previous video, pan de campo was made our state bread in 2005. Today's dish, chili, has been our state dish since 1977. But of course, the dish is much older than that. In fact, it was sold here in San Antonio by people that we call Chili Queens. The Chili Queens were entrepreneurs, businesswomen who ran food stalls in the different market squares, much like food trucks that we see around town today. They made a variety of dishes, and you might be curious as to what they were. They sold things like tortillas, beans, tamales, enchiladas, coffee, and of course, chile con carne or chili. The recipe that I'm making today is from the archives of the Witty Museum. Download your copy, just like I did, and we can get started today. So we are going to start by flouring our beef. And here I have um, my meat, uh, two pounds of beef and one pound of pork, cut up into half inch cubes. And the first thing that we're going to do today is flour it with all-purpose flour. So I'm just going to throw my pieces in here and get them all coated. Not only does this um, help our meat when it's getting brown, but it also makes a nice um, kind of thick sauce. Okay, so I am just finishing up flouring my beef and pork, and um, I'm shaking off the excess flour just so that it doesn't burn. And I'm putting it in my bowl. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, saute my meat. It's a historic recipe, so in the past they would have used lard. So here I have a quarter cup of lard that I have melted in the microwave. Uh, the microwave is not very historic, but that's okay. <laughs> the other uh, thing they would have used is beef suet. Now beef suet is the fat from around the kidney. I um, kindly got some beef fat from the butchers at HEB. And so I have rendered that down in a pan. And so I'm going to add that to my lard. So that I can have a half cup of fat, which is what the recipe calls for. There's flour in there for some reason. And now I have a half cup of fat, <laughs> various kinds, in which to saute my beef. So let's move over to the stove and do that. Okay, now we are going to brown our beef. So I'm going to take that uh, beef fat and the lard that I've rendered down and put this in my pan. And of course, this is a historic recipe. So if you want to make it in kind of an authentic way, you can um, do these, use these types of fat. But if you want to make it a little healthier and lighter, of course, um, you can substitute vegetable oil. Okay, I have my um, fats in the pan and now I'm going to start adding my beef. Uh, all right, now I've got my meat in the pan and the recipe says to cook this stirring quickly and often so I am just going to do that. So now that my meat is brown and um, one of the, his, the things about historic recipes is that um, they don't always give us as much detail as we would like, kind of like 
learning from your grandma who just adds pinches of this and pinches of that. So our chief curator, Amy Fulkerson, actually told me that this um, recipe was handwritten. So not a lot of details. And it just says, cook quickly, stir often. So I'm going to assume now that it's brown, I can add my onions. And I'm also going to add my garlic. So the liquid that's released from the onion is going to help with the flour that's kind of stuck to the bottom that's helping to create flavor. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and the onions are limp. And so now I'm going to add the water. And so it asks for a quart of water. which is two pints or four cups for those of you practicing your math this time, trying to get all your math practice in. And by the way, um, cooking is a great way to practice um, measuring, weighing, lots of different great math skills, converting units. So definitely give it a try. All right, so now that I have the water in the pan, I'm going to start preparing the chilies. So what I have here is a molcajete. So I've got um, an ancho pepper. I have a serrano pepper. And the recipe just says six dried red chilies. So depending on the spice level you like, you can use um, chili de arbol, which is a spicy chili. I'm just going to use a guajillo chili because I don't like a lot of spice. So um, I like flavor, not heat. So I have my three um, chilies here, and so I'm going to um, crush them up in my molcajete. All right, so right now um, I have my molcajete, and I am going to add my serrano pepper. I have uh, taken the stems and seeds and ribs out of the dried peppers. I just covered them with some water and then um, with some boiling water and I just let them steep. And so now I'm just going to take some of those chilies and then I'm going to grind. You wanna grind this into a paste. This is going to be the uh, flavoring and the seasoning in our chili. A lot of people today um, use chili powder and chili powder is a great quick way to make chili. But grinding your own fresh spices is pretty cool too. It's a great connection to history and our past. And it's a very um, fun and tactile um, experience to have in the kitchen. Okay, so once you've ground up all your chilies, um, go ahead and put them in the pan. I have been adding them as I've been grinding them. And I can feel just by stirring that it has gotten pretty thick. And that's because of the flour that we coated our uh, beef and pork cubes with. It acted as a thickener. Now I'm going to add some salt and some pepper. It has been two hours since my chili has cooked and um, I'm going to serve myself so you can see how delicious this looks. Now while I was waiting for it to cook, I did watch Choosy Chef make some tortillas on a different episode of Witty Where You Are. And so I've got them here to try with my chili. Thank you, Choosy Chef, for that recipe. 
Um, fresh corn tortillas will make a great accompaniment to your chili, just like the chili queens ate in San Antonio. My chili does not have beans because um, Texas chili does not have beans. Uh, but if you want to make them, you can serve them on the side the way the chili queens did. So this looks delicious um, and I can't wait to enjoy. And I hope you enjoy your chili as well. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Witty Where You Are.